Hi, Aries. I am Letitia from Letitia.com, and I'm astrologer, numerologist, tarot reader, spiritualist. And I am here with your reading for the second half of May. First, we're going to start with what is going on astrologically. After I do that, I'm going to pull some cards and see what the ancestors and spirits have to add to us today. So first, I'm going to start with what is happening around the 15th of May. So 14th, 15th, 16th, we will have um, in the sign of Taurus, we will have Venus. We will have Mercury, we will have the Sun, and of course Uranus is there. And then we will have the Moon in the sign of Libra. So we will be under this influence of this beautiful Venusian energy happening for us uh, at this time. And I love that. So for you, this is going to be affecting you in your second house of income because that's where Taurus is. So you will have all of these planets there for you. Amazing. Then, in your seventh house of partnerships, you will have the moon in the sign of Libra. So, with the moon in the sign of Libra, there you have peace. There you have uh, this beautiful energy with your partner, your lover, someone you're in an intimate uh, partnership with, business partnership. You, you have a feeling of um, stability. Um, and diplomacy that is there for you where you want to just get along you know you want to get along you want to just enjoy each other you have a feeling of safety a feeling of peace that is there and then with Venus in your second house with all of the other planets there is an opportunity for you to ground some money manifest some money in your life you know we're gonna have um, the sun tomorrow actually is going to go uh, be at 20 degrees of Taurus and when the sun hits 20 degrees of Taurus it will be in this beautiful trine aspect great aspect one of the best aspects that you can have with Saturn so the sun and Saturn in this beautiful aspect of Saturn is in the sign of Capricorn which is you know a sister sign to Taurus. So there you will be able to be, bring a grounding and stability to your income. So something that you've been working on, something that you've been planning, because Saturn is all about um, the work that you do. Saturn rewards the work that you put in, whereas Jupiter, you know, will just pour out blessings just because he's really nice a lot of times. Saturn is all about what have you worked towards. So if you have been working towards your goals, if you've been investing time, when this comes together, the sun and Saturn on the 20th, this is a time where you reap rewards for the work that you have put in. And I love it. So it's bringing some stability and some grounding to your money. And then with Venus there, Venus rules money and self-esteem and self-worth. So with Venus in the sign of Taurus, you know, you are feeling better about yourself. Money comes to you more easily. Uh, the things that you work on are just blessed, you know, just blessed, you know. People want your business. People want to do business with you. People, um, you get great ideas, you know, and then money just comes easier when you have this aspect going on. So that is uh, a part there. And then on the 18th, we have the full moon in the sign of Scorpio for you. This is happening in your eighth house. And so the eighth house is the house of hidden things. Uh, Scorpio is about hidden things. Um, it's about sex. The eighth house rules sex. Um, anything that we keep private, it rules the occult. And so... Um, with under the light of the full moon, there may be some hidden things that come out as it relates to maybe even somebody that you are having a sexual relationship with. Um, any kind of intimate relationships, you know, ruled by the eighth house. So there could be some news that comes out, uh, something that you did not know. 
Um, even if you are studying something occult knowledge, you could see things that you weren't able to see before. This is Aries sun, Aries moon, uh, Aries rising. So just something that you didn't realize before, you know, some information that you didn't know regarding um, alchemy or the hermetic laws or something. And you see it, you know, in a way that you had never seen it before. So it could be something as simple as that. Uh, the eighth house also rules resources, other people's resources. So if you could get an inheritance, some information could come out about that. You may find out that you have an inheritance. But the full moon brings things to culmination. So this, uh, the sun will be at 27 degrees. The moon will be at 27 degrees. And um, so 27 in numerology, 2 plus 7 equals 9. The number 9 always resonates with endings, letting go, culminations, and the full moon does as well. So with that, something is coming to an end when you receive the light on it. So if you receive the light on something you did not know, then the ignorance of it, the the not having the knowledge of it comes to an end because now you are fully aware of that particular thing. All right. So then on the 21st, we have the sun and Mercury moving into the sign of Gemini at zero degrees. So for you, this will be happening in your third house of communications. So this is bringing in great communication of uh, abilities for you because Mercury rules the sign of Gemini. So, you know, your ability to talk about what it is that you want to get across to the world, you may write a book. You know, you may start writing on a book because the, the sun will be at zero degrees. You may have a desire that comes in to write a book. You may get these great ideas about what to write about. You know, you may want to um, just start speaking, you know, sharing knowledge. You may start communicating more with your siblings. You know, you may just start uh, hanging out, talking to your siblings more on the phone. The third house has to do with um, sibling relationships of people in your community. You may have a community project that you want to do. And the door may open up for you to speak or to gather a group of people together. To, to talk about something that's going on in the community that you want to change. So these are a lot of things that could happen under uh, this energy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the cards. I'm using the African-American tarot deck. And I ask the ancestors and spirit guides to speak true for the Geminis. I'm sorry, for the Aries. Speak for the Aries. When I say Gemini, that's not right. Speak true for the Aries. What is happening for the second half of May? What energies? You know, we talked about astrologically, the third house. Then we have also Mars. Is moving into the sign of cancer, which is your fourth house. So we could have things changing for you around the home. Uh, you may move, Mars. You may move, moving into the sign of cancer. There may be um, with your mom. Mom may be moving. Mom may be doing some new things. Taking on some new projects. Family members could be moving in or out of the house. Changes like that could be happening with Mars. Or again, you could be moving home, moving away from home. Hmm. Three of Wands. I'm sorry, Three of Swords. Okay. I believe that's tied to the full moon in the eighth house because... And Three of Swords in this particular deck has to do with uh, money and a fear that something 
that is owed to you, you don't receive. That's in this particular gift. So there's something that is happening that's going to come out at the full moon as it relates to money that uh, maybe you should have received an inheritance. Or maybe you should have received some, a loan. And you feel like somebody undercut you or is being dishonest, stealing it from you. Speak true. Somebody is being dishonest and not giving you what it is that is yours, Aries. That is what you believe is happening during the second half of May. But judgment is coming. This was the first card out. The Three of Swords. But judgment is coming. An awakening is coming. Because we know, as we said, yeah, mm -hmm, there's somebody who has the wisdom who's going to speak in the situation regarding this money regarding what has been, what you feel has been taken from you. Judgment is coming. Eyes will be open. The truth will be told about it. Somebody with wisdom who's going to speak up, somebody in the family or judge, who has wisdom about the situation. This is the temperance card. It's going to come in and bring balance to the situation. Yeah. The Three of Pentacles. It's here. And the Two of Cups. Well, somebody comes in who is skilled, who has the skill to bring an understanding to the situation. So you may have to hire an attorney and it's a friend who brings the person in. It's some, a friend who knows the person who can work out, bring the insight that's needed, bring the temperance and the balance that is needed in the situation. Mmm. There's so many fears, my, my. The real issue is that people are not seeing things the right way. This card is the, the five of pentacles. So there's so much confusion about the situation at hand. But it's because people are speaking, the fears are here. This is the eight of swords. It's the fears that are here and causing people to see things backwards in this whole situation, not seeing it right. So this whole issue of they're stealing my money. I'm owed this money. And there's so much fear on the line as it relates to it. Words are being said. Ugly words are being said. You see this card, the, the eyes are on the feet. And the mouth is speaking words that are harsh and horrible and uh, impoverished. But it's the fears that are causing all of this to happen. Fears that fears from childhood, fear of poverty, fear of uh, not being valued, fear of not being appreciated are here and causing 
ultimately the confusion that is going on. So let's see what else, Spirit. Let's see what else is happening for Aries, the second half of May. Strength is in order. Strength is needed. Strength is needed. And real love, the star card, the star card is ultimately about, it's a humanitarian card, it's the, the card that's associated with the Aquarius, but ultimately it is about real love, it is about separating oneself from being selfish interestingly enough like the the this will be the leo card and this is the aquarius card and they are opposite so for sure this could be the budding of the heads between the oppositions of the uh, the leo and the aquarius these could be people that are involved aquarius and leo here but ultimately, the goal is to meet in the middle of the opposition. Because where Leo would be saying, look at me, it's all about me. And Aquarius is saying, well, it should be about everybody else. You know, so what about everybody else? And this one is saying, well, look at me, it's all about me. You know, what about me? But what about everybody else? There has got to be a place of a meeting in the middle. A meeting in the middle, a compromise, a place of compromise, a releasing of the fear, and a caution with the words and the thoughts. Because if not, this friendship, this partnership, this harmony and working together will be completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. And that's not what we want. So, Ultimately, we want the highest of these two, strength and, and love, strength and love is what needs to happen, dear Aries, in this situation. I'm sad to see this energy like this. Mm. Ultimately, look at that. Ultimately, if you can come to this place, if you can come to this place of compromise between the two energies and operate in the highest form of these energies with strength and honor for the individuals and for the group, then we have here the Knight of Pentacles, a sharing, a distribution of wealth. I don't know if you can see it because there's so much light. But he's pouring out, he's giving money gladly. The Knight of Pentacles. But it's got to be a balance, it's got to be a calmness, or it's got to be temperance that happens. Okay? All right? So ultimately, if you can come past the fears, release the fears, then what is due you and everybody else will come to you freely. I'm glad to see that. I'm going to pull a Oracle card for you. This is the um, Mystical Shamanic. Oracle deck. Everything is going to be okay, dear Aries. It is just about keeping your head, knowing that the universe is on your side. When these things happen, it's a part of life. 
confusion happens, but we are called to rise above, to have the calm head. I know that can be challenging a lot of times for Aries. Mars ruled, you know, jump in and say the things impulsively, whatever it is that comes to your mind. Yeah, the sacrifice is the card. So it is, it's the sacrifice that, that's in order, the sacrifice of your right to be right. And that's the biggest challenge a lot of times, you know, to the, to get past uh, the way we see things in order to see it from the viewpoint of others so that at the end of the day, relationships are not broken up and busted up, you know. Because a lot of times, you know, as it relates to money and things, material things, we get all bent out of sorts and we break up relationships over things that we're going to leave here. Things that don't really, really matter because relationships matter more than things, stuff, money. You know, because all of that stuff is tra transient. It comes and it goes, you know. So a lot of times it is the sacrifice of being right. The sacrifice of having your own way, your own thoughts. Not not your own thoughts, like you can't have your own thoughts, but to, but to say that the way that you think it is the only way that is right. But it is about sacrificing that and taking into account uh, what others may need. And at the same token, like I said, coming to a, a nice compromise. All right. So I thank you so much for watching, dear Aries. Let me know. Write me um, if this resonated with you. If this was your word, write me. Uh, my email address and everything will be below. And um, have a wonderful second half of May. And I will talk to you soon.